script to identify the objects that are part of our test. What we mean by being part of a test is that the objects are either used to emulate user input or is an object that we want to test to see if it has changed value according to the requirements. We're starting with the smart script application open, but we are not yet created a script. So the first thing we'll do is to create a new script. There are actually many ways to create a new script, but we'll use the most obvious one. That is, we'll press the new button. You may now notice that a couple of new panels appeared. These panels we'll come back to during the demo, but for now let's just move on to learning about the objects under test. We'll start by pressing the learn button. You'll now notice that the smart script window has been minimized and replaced by a smaller learn dialog. We already started the counter application and we're ready to start identifying the objects to use during the test. To capture the objects in the counter application, first press start tracking in the learn window. Notice that the start tracking label is now changed to tracking mode. This indicates that smart script is ready to identify our test objects. To identify which objects to include in the test, first move the mouse to the object. The decrement button is highlighted as the mouse enters its boundary. SmartScript provides a hotkey, by default control 1, that we'll use to tell SmartScript that the decrement button is part of our test. We'll repeat this procedure for the other objects that are part of our test too. That is, we'll move the mouse over the objects and press control 1. But notice how the objects are lit as we hover over them. The final object we'll learn is the text box. So that brings us to three objects learned. We now learned all our objects and we'll end the learning phase. We stop learning by clicking on the stop learn text in the learning dialog. As the learn dialog closes, we get back into the smart script main UI. We have now filled in what we later will learn is a data grid. The three objects we identified, the decrement button, the increment button, and the counter text box, are now listed as columns in the table. The button have sensible names, but the counter value is called static text. This is because the object did not have a caption that SmartScript could use for naming it. To make the test easier to read, we want to give it a sensible name. So we give it a name that we can remember. To rename an object, we have to go into the little tree view, select the object in the tree view, we'll right click on the object and select rename in the context menu. We can now type in a new name. In my example here, we'll use the name counter text box instead of static text. And finally, we'll just press enter to finalize the name change. Notice that the name has now changed to counter text box, which is a much more descriptive name than the previous static text. Well, that concludes how we learn objects in SmartScript. Notice how easy it was. All we had to do was to run the application, point to the objects that are relevant to our test, and use the hotkey control 1. And the counter application, we only have three objects, decrement, increment, and the counter text box. But in another application, you might find lots of columns, one for each object. You might start to see something very important in SmartScript. That is, we're not just recording a script. It's not like recording a macro that we will play back. What we're doing is we're identifying players or objects that will be important to our test. This is a very important point as we move on because these objects, as they change, we can modify the objects and it will re be reflected on all tests. But much more of that later in later lessons. Now that we learned the objects, we can take a look at the main UI. The main UI has a couple of panels that we need to learn. On the left, we have a panel that we're going to call the object view or the tree view. And it shows all the objects that are part of our test. It is also uh, nicely organized under the windows that they appeared. In our application here, we had a single window. In a larger application, you'll see that we have many windows. And then on the right, we have another view, which is a table. And this is often called a data grid. And that data grid is where we're actually going to write our script. Now we say write script, we're really not writing a script. We're populating this table, and what SmartScript will do is it will generate the script for us.